Today on my video blog, we're going to be demystifying the new Intel Sandy Bridge processors and the chipsets that go with them a little bit, or at least we're going to be attempting to do so. Now there's a few new features on these chips, or a few important features, let's say. So let's start with Intel Turbo. So Turbo, as we're familiar with already from the Core i7 original processor, allows the chip to overclock itself if you have enough cooling and you're not uh, overstepping the thermal design power. So turbo processors such as the Core i5-2400 are allowed to turbo themselves up up to four speed grades above their stock frequency if you're using only one core. They also, okay so here, let's, uh, let's, let's start sort of working our way along here. So they are also allowed to turn up the multiplier and OC up to four speed bins above that four speed bins. So up to eight speed bins or multiplier levels on the P67 chipset. This is also the same as over here, okay? On the H67, it can only use turbo mode. That's it. No additional overclocking. So four speed bins, turbo. There. So that is a regular turbo processor. Then there are completely non-turbo processors. In terms of overclocking, we have no support on H67, no support on P67, and no support on Z68. Nothing. You can overclock probably about 5% if you turn up the base clock, but it's really not recommended because you can do all kinds of nasty stuff like corrupt your hard drive and blah, just don't do it, okay? So then we've got unlocked. Oh, so, oh, yeah, example would be like a low end Core i3. All right, unlocked. So these ones have turbo because all the unlocked chips are already reasonably high end chips and they also have a suffix K. So the example we're using is the Core i7 2600K. All right, so you cannot increase oh well okay i guess you got support for the four speed regular turbo okay you have completely up to whatever the heck you want in terms of overclocking on p67 and you have up to whatever you want on z68 which isn't out yet so these guys you can overclock as much as you could possibly want well, until the chip reaches its limit. So, okay, right? So if Z68 is exactly the same as P67, then what's going on here? So let's talk about the other important feature of these new Core i-series processors, and that is their onboard graphics. So there are a few different kinds of onboard graphics built into these chips. The K-series chips actually have the highest end onboard graphics, which is pretty funny because uh, no onboard graphics on P67. So on the platform where you can actually overclock these K-series chips, you have no support for onboard video. Uh, here we have onboard video enabled, but we actually can't overclock the chips. So you have the best possible graphics core on the one that is only supported on the one where you can't overclock it and it has the overclock. So here we have onboard graphics enabled. That is the difference between Z68 and P67. It has sort of the best of both worlds, but it isn't out yet. So these ones don't have quite as powerful an onboard graphics card. So same thing here, no onboard graphics supported. Here it's supported, here it's supported, and same thing here. These ones have the lowest end onboard graphics, and here is no, and here is okay. So that is the difference between all these different chips and all these different chip sets. So in summary, if you are not using onboard graphics and you are overclocking, then your choice is going to be a K-series processor and a P67 motherboard. If you want to use onboard graphics and you don't really care quite as much about performance, you do not need a K-series processor. You can get either one of these and an H67 motherboard. If you want the best of both worlds, I guess you'll just have to wait until Z68 launches at some point in the future. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other videos about computers and whatnot.